was so difficult for me. Let's see if I ordered the right food. <laughs> uh, thank you. Thank yeah. So we've got a bit of a loose spoke this morning. Where is it? Ah, there. Oh, no, we've got two. We've got one, which is completely missing again. Ah, and this one. This one is loose. Got to get an Allen key on it before we lose another one. That's the one. Okay, I think that's pretty good. Sasiva, thank you. Ta ciao. Ta -ciao. <sighs> oh, my bloody ear fell off again. <laughs> this intercom. <laughs> I'm gonna burn this intercom when we get back. It's the worst intercom ever. <laughs> but probably the cheapest as well. So, ready for Kazakhstan, eh? <sighs> Let's do it. Let's go. First stop on the road is a petrol station, which is just there. 92. Because you see here... She said it's, it's closed here. No? No. Oh, okay. Perfect. Oh, look, he's also got this car that that kid had, Lada. Oh. It's a pretty cool car, isn't it? Yeah. I've never heard of it before. Okay. Let's get some juice for Bumblebee. Good morning, world. Welcome back to our circumnavigation around the globe by motorcycle. We're here just near the small town of Pospelika in eastern Russia. And today we're heading to the border to Kazakhstan. Yes, today is actually a really, really special day because we're crossing into Kazakhstan and that means we are not overstaying our Russian visa. We had to apply for this Russian visa a year ago and this visa just expires in a few days. Today represents the last day in a long struggle to make it here before this visa expired. <laughs> yeah. and, oh my god! Oh, it's been really, really, really difficult physically and mentally. We haven't had a lot of rest recently because we've just had to keep going and going and going, basically fighting the days. Yeah, it was a hell of a ride, hey? <laughs> because we didn't know how to come back to England. We wanted baby to go um, into Malaysia or we wanted to go into China, you know, there were a few other options, but none of these options were actually uh, reasonable for us. Like we couldn't do it except this way, which we have done now and it feels amazing yeah i mean in the end having to fly the bike from canada to south korea then take a ferry to vladivostok this was the only way for us to make it back to england we were apprehensive about going into russia in the first place considering the global situation at the moment i'm really happy that we did it because it was absolutely uh, incredible to ride through yeah it wasn't what i expected at all and i'm really glad that we did it so the mission for today is to cross the border get into kazakhstan and reach the city of seme where we are really going to have a much needed rest google Maps says it will take us one hour and 50 minutes to reach the border of Kazakhstan and it's already 10.45 so better hit the road let's go Many birds. Yeah. That's a beautiful wetland. Wow. 
So we're getting pretty close to the border now. So we're gonna do two things before we leave Russia. First is gonna be, we're gonna fill up here at the last petrol station in Russia, just to use up some of our extra rubles. And then we're gonna see if we can find ourselves a Kazakhstan insurance, because apparently they sell them already before you enter here on the Russian side. So it'd be useful if we could get that before we enter Kazakhstan. Oh, here we go, firing up. Oh, 300 rubles, <laughs> three pounds. Managed to get three pounds more in the tank. The fuel's just too cheap here, isn't it? <laughs> the insurance is just over there. I think so. All right. Wow, I think that actually the border is right in front of us as well. I think so too. <laughs> okay. Look, not too many cars for waiting. That's good. Let's see first if we can get some insurance. Waiting for the insurance, but it looks like that we can get it done here. A few minutes later. Perfect. So we managed to get a one month policy covering us for both Kazakhstan and Kyrgyzstan and it cost us 5,300 rubles. So that's like 53 pounds for a month. That's not too bad. And we got a SIM card sorted as well for Kazakhstan. We just have to top it up in Kazakhstan. We're doing pretty good. Yeah. Doing pretty good today. Now we just have to wait for this barrier to open. <sighs> Could be another hour before it opens again. But when it does open, we're at the front, ready to go before this truck. <laughs> Three hours later. We are finally out of Russia. Yay! So now we're just waiting in line to enter Kazakhstan. We're back at the front in front of the barrier. So yeah, let's see how long it takes before we can get in and get this process sorted. It's currently coming up to half three. We arrived at the border at half past 12. So it's taken us a little while, but I'll tell you guys more about it when we get out of here. You're on? I'm so on. Okay, and we are on the road. <laughs> Welcome to Kazakhstan! Ah! We made it! Oh, oh my God! That was super fast on the Kazakhstan side. Literally about half an hour and we were through. And you know what, for Kazakhstan, you don't even need to get a temporary import permit. Like once you had the passport stamped, they had a little look at the bike and then they were just like, okay go and i was like uh permit document no just go <laughs> what and we just researched online do you need a temporary import permit for kazakhstan no literally kazakhstan they don't care about the bike at all they're just like come in sell the bike do whatever you want we don't care but let me talk about the russian side of the border because that was the real time consuming side so it was nothing to do with bumblebee in fact they didn't even check bumblebee but when we went to the passport control and gave them the passports of course we had to wait at the side and then when everybody else had left they took us into an interview room and then started asking us all the questions for the third time where are we going where have we been they wanted our phone uk phone numbers they even got our imeis from both of our phones i don't know what they did with our imei numbers but they wanted to find out some stuff about us normally we don't have anything to cover up you know because we didn't do anything of course but you're sitting there and i was just sweating you know i was just oh my god like how long are gonna this take and what are they doing and do they have to call the police now and you know in your head you just create the story of like now it's over to be fair they made us wait there after we first gave our passports i think we waited for one hour one hour and a half yeah and the other yeah. groups of people kept coming in and going through coming in and going through and yeah. the whole time we were just sitting there like what are they doing with our passports? What are they doing with the information we've just given them? Have they found out some inconsistencies in our story? <laughs> you know, because when you're waiting there without your passport in there, I mean, you are effectively a prisoner at that point. Like, yeah. we, co we couldn't go anywhere. Like, we were just in that room. We couldn't leave. We couldn't go to the bathroom. We couldn't do anything. If they wanted to just detain us for one reason or another, you know, they could have just done it. But at the end of the day, they were quite nice. 
he gave us our passport bags he said i wish you great travel and he smiled at us and, and that was it everything was good yeah and that was it after like one and a half hours no yes. explanation of what they did or anything yeah. they were just like here's your passports thank you bye bye yes oh. we are in kazakhstan yes we are through we have been in and out of russia twice and we made it out yes i'm so happy i'm so happy i mean i left russia and being in russia but these border situations are so uncomfortable yeah that i'm not choosing to go back anytime soon yeah i just feel as well so sorry for these people who have to go through uh, some sort of interviews all the time Man, when they I don't want know to if travel, I would travel. You know? I just don't know if I would travel if, if that was the case every time, you know. We're so lucky uh, with the freedom of our passports. Yes. You know, we can ride around the whole world and most of the time it's just stamp the passport, welcome, that's it, you're through. Yes, yes. Oh, we're so lucky about that. So lucky. <sighs> That was the end of a long road. Oh my God, yes. Now we are nearly at the stage where we can have a proper break, proper days off for our bodies to recover. It's like a weight off of the shoulders, you know? Yeah. So it looks like that the record <laughs> is so close that we will make it actually. Almost no obstacles in our way now. Yeah. We are finally able to say that we can actually make it back yeah <laughs> we, i think nice. we are going to make it back but so far this is uh, how kazakhstan looks like <laughs> nice <laughs> green and pleasant except the road is significantly more bumpy so, so bumpy. i'm just taking it really easy yeah for those of you who are following you'll know that our suspension is totally broken it looks like there's a valve here and there's oil coming out of this valve our rear shock has no oil no gas in it and we're just bouncing around on the rear spring <laughs> unfortunately we're just gonna have to bumble our way probably one and a half hours and make it to our rest stop in semi yes Woo. Yes, almost there. It's our first Kazakhstan cows. <laughs> Hello, guys. And our first small Kazakhstan town. Nice. Nice. This is pretty slow going to get to Seme. I can barely make it above 30 miles an hour before the bike is just bouncing around yeah it's really uncomfortable here on the back for sure we have to get this fixed asap we desperately desperately need a new shock now yeah even the guy who repaired the shock told us dang he said, he said dang <laughs> did he say that yeah yeah he said dang that shock's near the end of his life that day or something like this you know Aww. like like basically just try and get a replacement so we've emailed motorcycle world Ew, with some bikers nice <laughs> i couldn't see where they were from hey Could i you? think they're from russia because they did the hunt sign oh yeah yeah if yeah. they wave they're from russia yeah if they put the two fingers down then they may be european yeah so we've emailed motorcycle world about trying to source a new shock for us and get it sent out to Kazakhstan. So we're just waiting on their reply yeah. to see how much it's gonna cost and how quickly we can get this shock done. And then in Almaty, we'll have the bike fully serviced. We'll have the new shock put in and uh, get Bumblebee back up to 100%. Yeah, get Bumblebee flying again, hey? Yeah, at the moment Bumblebee's sort of like- Crawling. But anyway, we're bouncing along here. Yeah, 30 miles to go to Semi. Yeah. nearly at the hotel <laughs> yes finally well it would be 10 past 6 in russian time but we've gone back an hour so Yay! it's actually 10 past 5 yes now we are only gmt plus 6 that's really cool hey that's barely anything now it still doesn't help us to wake up earlier in the morning though <laughs> no. we always just sleep in the extra hour and they get up at the same time every time yeah all right that's us
train track. So excited to arrive. My bump is hurting. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, my bump is hurting. <laughs> so apparently it's uh, one of these ones. I think it might be that one over there, that brick one. Is it? Oh uh, yeah. It's the brick. I think it is. Oh my God. I think this trip makes me like 50 years older. Yeah, mini yeah. hotel. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, I think I'm a hundred years older. <sighs> Let's go check in. Whoop, whoop. Salam. Good night, Bumblebee. All secure in the hotel secure parking. Oh my lord, my rib. Oh. And of course we've got multiple flights of stairs. <laughs> Up we go. And this is our humble abode for the coming days. That's a pretty nice room, hey? Wow. Look at these velvet chairs. A nice little breakfast table for when you prepare breakfast for me tomorrow morning. Nice. Let's check out the bathroom. Oh look, we've got a full-size mirror. Stupid intercom. Got a really high up raised shower and a toilet which is not entirely square. But it's lovely. Lovely. And we always keep our boots actually in the bathroom just to keep the smell out. Oh, you have to. There's no way we could sleep with that. Yeah. Oh my lord. Wait, let me just have a. Just a few. Whoa, those are some stinky boots. Wow, and how did we make it? Happy and alive! Yes. Oh my god. I'm so, so happy. I think this is one of my favorite days because we can finally just have a little bit rest because I'm also super excited for the next leg, which we're gonna plan very soon. But that's it from us today. We hope you enjoyed the video. If so, please give us a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, share the video with your friends and family, comment below, and we will see you next time.